Research can be really, really intimidating and a lot of people think that you have to be some rocket scientist to do something. Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be talking about undergraduate research advice. Specifically how to get your foot in the door so you can get into an undergraduate research job, preferably paid. Yeah. I guess we should start off by talking about our own experiences as undergraduate researchers. It all started when... <laughs> it all started when I was this little... As many of you know, Sony and I both went to community college. The community college that we went to had an honors program and they offered different honors courses, of course, and we both took honors chemistry classes. So for those honors chemistry classes, your duty as the honors student, because it was like like say the class had 40 students in it but there was only like one to four honor students in it so it was like conjoined you know except the honor student had an extra project and that project was really cool because basically what they had to do was develop like their own mini research project and carry it out using equipment from the community college's stock room so it was quite a feat it was very stressful but it was a lot of fun and it was a great little glimpse at the world of research so that, that was our very first actually we both did this we did it for general chemistry and for organic chemistry and yeah, that was like our first glimpse at the world of research. <laughs> it was really stressful. It was like getting thrown into the deep end, like yeah. figure out a project. And we were just like, <laughs> what do I do? And it's like, does this have to be like groundbreaking or? Yeah, like do I have to cure cancer? Or yeah. Like, can I just synthesize a product? Yeah, so after that, well, actually during that, we both worked in the stock room. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so we both had experience working in the stock room. So that consisted of, you know, it making... voluntary. Yeah, it was voluntary. Yeah. It wasn't um, paid. No. <laughs> really good experience. Especially because we didn't know anything, mind you. Yeah. Other than, obviously, we took, like, our chemistry laboratory classes. But as far as, you know, it being work, yeah. I think the stock room gave us a very good real-life, hands-on experience. And stock room workers were very patient. Very nice. And then it was also nice because then, you know, we were cool with them. I don't want to say their names. I don't know. They would take us into the stock room sometimes to show us really cool things. Like I remember one time, I'll, I'll blur out the name, but she was showing us liquid bromine and how dangerous it is. And she was like squirting out the, in the fume hood and, and on the surface and it was like sizzling up. And, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Just little cool things like that, you know, that nerds like us would enjoy. <laughs> So, well, prior to transferring, we applied everywhere for undergraduate research, and we both got one for UCR. Yours was for HSI STEM? Yeah, Summer Bridge to Research. Yeah, Summer Bridge to Research, and then mine was for California Alliance for Minority Participation in STEM. Thank you. <laughs> or also known as CAMP. When we were transferring from the community college to a UC, we were trying our best to apply for an internship that would actually pay us to do undergraduate research for multiple reasons. You know, we were independent, we were moving in together, and blah blah blah. And basically, we just really needed we needed the money over the summer. Why work, you know, as a waitress or in retail or whatever when we could be working in a lab, getting experience that would be beneficial to us for graduate school, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we busted our butts by applying to like 10. I remember we applied to so many because we didn't have experience. Yeah. So we were applying to schools like from all sorts of ends of the spectrum. We applied to Caltech just for funsies to their LIGO project. We were like, take us. I don't yeah. know how to code, but take us. That was so funny. And Caltech was like, yeah, no, yeah. I'm sorry. One out of 10 took us and that was UCR, which was, you know, such a wonderful experience because they really did cater it towards students like us who were transfer students with no research experience. Yeah. So that paid us what? Like I think it was five four to five grand. I can't remember. Yeah, I think it was five grand. And it was a stipend and stipends are <laughs> A struggle. Yeah. Uh. So the reason we're saying stipends are a struggle is because it just takes forever to get them. And yeah, always issue with the payments. And it interferes with their financial aid. Yeah, for some reason. And this just, isn't to put you off. But. Yeah, it just always messes with our financial aid and we always have to go in and stand and I, I'm sure you guys know like how much of a pain the financial aid office is so it's lots of fun standing in line the, the people are at our school are really nice yeah. and in the end we fix the issue but it just takes 
a really long time. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to, if that's like your only job is research and you know you need that like rent money or whatever, um, budget ahead of time because you should expect a delay in your stipend. That's just in our experience, story of our lives. Stipends yeah. are always delayed. So always, yeah. These undergraduate research, uh, like REU programs, are really nice, like at campuses, because they'll reimburse us for our GRE exams, and they also pay for our GRE courses, which is really nice because those are really pricey. Yeah, it's cool. They pay for the courses, which come with like the GRE um, practice test book thing. Yeah, and it comes with like flashcards and a teacher. Like it's a class, so you yeah. have to go. And, and then it also gives you like the online access, so you can oh, take yeah. um different practice yeah tests. different practice tests yeah. so these research programs it's not just research like basically they pay you like the four to five grand for ten eight to ten weeks of research yes that you are getting professional development yeah but I was gonna say like that is your full-time job like you yeah. can't work yeah. um, off campus or you can't mm -hmm. have another job like that's your full-time job mm -hmm. but what Sonia was gonna say is like it's not just research it's also yeah it's um, professional development it's um you know gearing you towards grad school pretty much. Basically, that was our very first like entrance into research was summer 2016 at UCR, which mm -hmm. is awesome. And it was perfect because we were planning on going to UCR together anyways. So we got to explore the campus and get familiar with the campus before we actually started our first quarter at UCR, which is very beneficial yeah. as new students. It helps so much. Yeah. yeah. It saves so much time. So from there, so these internships, they only paid us, you know, the, the five grand was only for the summer. But then we wanted to continue doing research in our labs like throughout the quarter. So fall, winter, spring. Basically, we both talked to our PIs and blah, blah, blah. My PI was um, willing, he pays his undergraduates. So he was like, yeah, I'll, like I'll pay you to work in my lab and you know, this and that, whatever. As long as I have funding, I'll pay you. There are some PIs who just don't pay undergraduates. That's very common. Like I was in a very unique and um, privileged position where my PI would pay me mm -hmm. because they exist. There are a lot of PIs that will pay you, but I think the majority don't pay undergraduates yeah. out of pocket. Yeah, my PI at the time, if he was going to pay you, he expected you to, you know, work all like the time. Full time. And that wasn't going to happen during the school year. Yeah. yeah, so I worked in my first lab for about nine months and then I transitioned over into my new lab. So in between that transition, you were paid through that internship program, like $500 maybe at most for the year. Some of that was for going into the lab to doing like small experiments and then also for presenting at symposiums. Symposiums are a big thing that we haven't mentioned yet, but we've presented at a lot of symposiums and it's, it's usually because they go hand in hand with these internships. Like that's one of the requirements of the internships yeah. so that at the end you have to put together either a poster presentation or an oral presentation and uh, yeah, present your project. Prior to transitioning, I did a little more work with my lab and I presented at a symposium. But then uh, after I finished up my work there, I started working in my new lab. So when I went into my new lab, we both actually, we switched internships. So, it, well, it's actually a scholarship now, right? Because it's a UC Leeds, it's a It's an internship, but they call it scholars, oh, okay. not scholarship. Uh, um, yeah, so you see the leads and I guess it's a pro it's another program where they it lasts for two years instead and the funding is for two summers as well. Each summer you're required to present as well and during these winter time you're also required to present at the annual um, UC LEAD symposium. There's a lot of presenting in there, a lot of practice in there and again uh, more experience for lab work. Most of these research programs are very similar to each other like they're usually eight to ten weeks you usually have to present at the end like at a symposium yeah. they all have like their unique things but yeah whatever. Even though we were with UC Leeds for our summer program last year and we will be again this year we were still affiliated with CAMP so we had a really cool experience with CAMP basically the director was offering CAMP undergraduates an opportunity to travel to Hawaii to present our research projects at the AAAS Pacific Division Conference in Hawaii. This was in 2017 in like June. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know, the AAAS is the American Association for the Advancement of Science. So we applied and we were chosen. And it was really nice because, I mean, well, first of all, we got to go to Hawaii. Which yeah, is, never been to Hawaii before. I've, yeah, same, never same. been. So it was great. They paid for everything and it was a lot of fun. Um, so we did that and then UC Leeds and yeah so we're here now. <laughs> there was one last thing that 
I experienced, which was um, a pretty big scholarship that I was really fortunate that one of my internship directors, he pretty much drafted an application for me. It's like a, an application that you submit through rec recommendation and basically it pays me like $1,500 per quarter to do research or something like that. That was really nice. So that's our experience and now we're going to get into how you can go about applying for these positions or how do you can just get your foot into the door. So starting with the internship route. So like we said, you need laboratory experience. You said stockroom experience, honors programs, like ask, ask at your school no matter whether you're at a community college, Cal State, or UC, ask around, like, it's about networking and communication. Okay, so when you're going about trying to get a paid internship for the summer, I recommend that you apply everywhere. Like, don't just apply to one or two campuses, apply to as many as you can. You might be wondering, where do I find these applications? There's two main sources. One of them is, I think there's like an NSF website. If you just Google research experience experiences for undergraduates, or REUs for short, just Google that and you'll find a bunch of them. I'll try to leave some links in the description box for you, but um, you'll see that there are different locations across the nation. So you can select the location you're interested in, download the application, submit it if you if you meet the requirements. The other option is to stalk different campuses, like UCR, right? You can just go to the UCR website, go to their undergraduate research tabs, and read what their offers are. Each campus has different offers, so just you have to do online research, basically. When you're actually applying to all these places, you're going to need a handful of letter of recommendations. So if you don't have any letters of recommendation, your best bet is to start networking. Really important to have that skill. It's something that I'm still always learning and still always doing is networking, networking, and networking, which one of our mentors is always telling us and pretty much always just yelling at us, just network, network, network. network, network. And Never burn your bridges. Yeah, yeah. she's right, and she's she's, right. she's totally right. And this is really important for academia as well. We're gonna make a video about professionalism at some point later, mm -hmm. so we'll go more in depth about networking. I just wanted to say in this video to not approach it with like a business mindset. I think that that you'll come off the wrong way if because it's very leechy. It's like I'm just talking to this professor because I want to get something out of it. Yeah. It's more about making relationships and I mean I view maybe this is considered unprofessional right like I don't talk to them with slang but I view professors and directors as friends or TAs and stuff like I'm very friendly I'm very natural and I mean it works at all <laughs> like don't be a don't don't, don't be kiss a kiss butt. ass <laughs> yeah. yeah don't be a kiss ass anyways network so I already taught, touched a little bit on the scholarship thing, but basically once, if you do get a summer summer internship where they are paying you like five grand for 10 weeks or whatever, it doesn't have to end there, you know, like talk to the directors, look online. There's a, um, those same summer programs typically have scholarships that can fund you throughout the quarters to continue working in the lab if that's the work you want to do. Yeah, so if you want to join the lab, when you email the professor, you don't want to sh straight up put into the email like, hey, I'm interested in working into your lab. I mean, I guess you can. Um, they want to know, like, you know, what are you bringing to the table? Maybe you should sit down and talk to them, explain to them your interests, and see, read some of their papers, find out what they what they do, and actually see see if it even sounds like something that you want to do. Yeah, that's step one. Is um, do your, do your research on yeah. that. Like oh, we we call it stalking. Like wh whenever we think someone's lab is cool, we're like oh like let's go stalk them. So <laughs> any professor at any university, if you type their name into Google and the university, like I don't know Mariah Gomez UCR, right? Someday, <laughs> um, my little face will pop up, or you click on my face and it has the professor, it has their credentials, it has like a little synopsis of their research, and typically there's a website link. They all have their they have their own website. You want to click on that website and the reason why is that they typically list out publications. These websites are always, aren't always are always like up to date with their research right. so you want to stock their publications and see if you're interested in them basically. Yeah. Step one before you email. And so with those emails, just some advice for you that has worked for me and I've actually helped write these emails for friends and I've gotten them into labs. So. Yeah. 
um, I don't know, I have a degree in email writing <laughs> or something. Okay, but no, but ser seriously though, grammar is very important. Use a relevant subject heading. Don't say, hey, watch What's your grammar, happened? be professional. <laughs> Another thing is partition the email because if your email is getting long, these oh. professors are tired, they're busy, they don't want to read a block of paragraphs, so partition it where appropriate. Don't state your GPA. Like, you might have a sexy GPA, but don't be like, hello, my name is Mariah Gomez and I have a 4.0 <laughs> GPA. Because they're going to roll their eyes. And honestly, most people, most, not all, but most people with beautiful GPAs are terrible in lab. Like, you are, <laughs> I'm sorry, like, you're bookworms and you, put, you go into a lab setting, a research setting, not all, but a lot of them. And this is something that TAs and professors joke about too. These book smart people, aren't necessarily like the lab smartiest that's a word so what I'm, yeah don't brag about your GPA in the email so obviously tell them like your name your major maybe like what you want to be when you grow up or something like yeah in the email like I like I would probably mention I want to go to graduate school I want to be a professor or something like that anyways tell them oh I stumbled upon your research online I was reading a few of your articles I find this very interesting like draw information from their articles you actually want to seem like you did read their or not seem but like <laughs> show that you did read the research and you're genuinely interested and say something like this is what i want to do for grad school is there any way that i could set up a time to meet with you one-on-one -on -one and maybe i can get more advice about grad school and research and whatever i think that these emails are the most effective because they're well-rounded you're not demanding anything from them you're not bragging or anything and you, and you seem like a very genuine person who is interested in their research and they can also benefit from you know because they need minions so. <laughs> yeah and then just end it with like um you know thank you so much for your time i look forward to meeting you something best your name research can be really really intimidating and a lot of people think that you have to be some rocket scientist to do something there's a syndrome that many of us uh, struggle with and it's called imposter syndrome and i don't know if you guys are aware of imposter syndrome but this is where you think that you're pretty much i guess never good enough to do or be be where you're at so you know, in my case, I feel like I struggle with it. Like, um, you know, still to this day, I'm like, okay, I work in a lab, but I still feel like, can, can I be, a, am I a chemical engineer? Like, wait, what? Like, why am I here? Like, how did I get this far? But it's just like, you know, no, I'm here for a reason. So you want to be confident. It's just, there's a big difference between confidence and cockiness, right? But the reason that we're mentioning this is because like the whole scientist and research stereotype you know, maybe you, you don't look like what you think a scientist look, looks like or you don't have a perfect GPA or you're comparing yourself to your... I know we do this, like when we're sitting amongst all the Miserup students, this, this is like the title of our internship, right? Like the main, the core of our internship. And we're like, wow, you're freaking scary smart and you're hyper smart. And I'm sitting here feeling like a dum-dum, you know, but... <laughs> but the key to research is diversity and professors know that and they're going to if they select you if they're selecting you for a reason so believe in yourself that's very cheesy but yeah. believe in yourself so if you're going the independent route be prepared to hear a professor that's going to say i just don't pay undergraduates that's okay like don't freak out and leave or whatever i would say yeah well i would like to integrate into your lab and learn more about it blah 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 whatever yeah. but after that start applying to internships for the summer and then, you know, some, sometimes um, they don't pay you all right off the bat. They want you to put work yeah. in first and see if you're actually going to be committed. And maybe later on that could be a conversation that you have with your PI and ask them, hey, like, you know, I know before you said I couldn't, you know, that you wouldn't pay me, but, you know, I've been doing this, this, that, and blah, 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 whatever, whatever the case is. And you know, it, it, it could change. A good way to bring it up, like if you already have a job, I don't know, say you're a waitress or wait waiter or whatever, and you also work in the lab, you could sit down with your PI after like six months. Six months is a pretty good marker. I know it sounds like a lot, but trust me, it's a good marker. Uh, sit down with them and tell them, you know, like I've been thinking about committing to the lab more and quitting my waitress job. Is there any way that you could financially support me in this lab? That way I could commit to this lab more. You know, like that's a that's that's really good because you're not being like, hey, pay me. Like, don't you dare put that in your email, like your initial email. Oh, and then you also could do research units. 
That's another thing. Yeah, that's and that's, that's a way that you can get your foot in the door as well. I've done it for two units with my current professor, and I might do it in the future again with mm -hmm. a chemistry professor. I think most majors have an elective at some point where you could do research units instead of an elective. Talk to your counselor. <laughs> your counselor will tell you. But uh, that's, yeah, it's a really good way to get your foot in the door, and it looks great on your transcript. It should be an easy A. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, so that's pretty much everything, huh? Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If we missed anything in this video or you want us to go more in depth into something, drop a comment in the comments below. Make sure you check the description box because I'll have links for like these REUs and NSF programs, whatever. And useful links. Uh, is there anything else that I need to say? No, that's it. Yeah, well, we'll see you next time. Good Bye. luck Thank with you. your research endeavors.